Hey folks, this is Mark Marin and you're listening to Tom Clark's main event. All right, do it. This is Daddy Show. Step off. Hey, what is up? Welcome to the program. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and you are listening to Tom Clark's Main Event. This is episode number 19 of the podcast, and if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome aboard. For those of you who are coming back for another listen, hey, thanks for returning. And to everyone out there, we will always extend to you the customary Laurel and Hardy handshake. Thank you for your support through all of my endeavors online and anywhere else you can find the Tom Clark at work. That was pretty vain, wasn't it? Uh, We're coming to you, as always, from the very lovely and spacious Boink Studios here in the great state of North Carolina. And this may be perhaps the shortest podcast that I've ever done. Uh, I I had something I needed to talk about, tried to uh, get a quick one done here today. Uh, for uh, uh, for you folks out there, hopefully you are pro wrestling fans who are tuning in. And if not, hey, thanks for clicking on that great big ugly mug you saw with the headphones around his neck. That's me. I'm Tom. Okay, what's up? How are you? Um, if you are a fan and you know the business inside and out, you you keep up with the latest news and and what's going on in and around the industry of professional wrestling, then you know the news recently about the American Dream, Dusty Rose, um, the legendary. American Dream has passed on, and uh, this podcast basically is just a really small tribute in the grand scheme of things. It's hard to sum up. 47 years in the business, um, it's it's almost impossible, I would say, and um, really, this is not even going to come close, but I had some things I had to say, some things I wanted to say about Dusty the Man, about Dusty the Character, uh, and about everything that has to do with the American dream himself. And I've written about him a lot uh, as I'm uh, through the years, as I've said before on the podcast here. And, um, you know, to me, it it just doesn't do him justice because I really had to vocalize this and get some of this out on, you know, just get it recorded, just get it out there for the masses to hear. Um, As always, I value your opinion. And I know a lot of you folks out there listening right now are WWE fans. Uh, and if you are not familiar with Dusty Rhodes' work back in the day in Jim Crockett Promotions, I encourage you to watch the WWE Network. I encourage you to pick up his DVD set, which is excellent, by the way. Uh, go to YouTube. YouTube is old matches against Ric Flair, against Tully Blanchard, uh, against the Horsemen in any capacity. When he tag team with the Road Warriors, uh, tag team with Magnum TA. Some of the best matches you will ever see as a pro wrestling fan took place in the Mid-Atlantic Territory back in the day, Jim Crockett Promotions. Again, we're coming to you from North Carolina. Uh, I am an old school pro wrestling guy. Always have and always will be. This is always going to be Crockett country down here, folks. Least you forget. Uh, And, you know, for my money, pound for pound, one of the best all time in the history of the business. And how many guys can lay claim to that? Think about the sport that you follow. Maybe you don't follow just professional wrestling. How many living legends are there in the sport that you follow right now? Okay, as time goes on, these these veterans are getting older and, 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 you know, the years have taken their toll on them. And Dusty lived to be 69. We could have used him to be 169, actually. Uh, gone much too soon. Uh, and it's quite a blow for WWE as a company. Quite a blow for pro wrestling fans uh, in general. For anyone that's ever enjoyed Dusty's work, we're going to extend, of course, our, our deepest condolences go out from the main event here to Dusty's family and very close friends who knew him better uh, than any of us ever could. Uh, Sad day in pro wrestling. Um, Depending upon when you listen to this particular podcast, 
Uh, the Monday Night Raw after Dusty's death has not yet happened, so I imagine there's going to be uh, quite the tribute, hopefully. The video packages were shown on uh, uh, Money in the Bank on June 14th. Some of the podcasts that you're getting ready to listen to, actually, this is just the introduction here, folks. I recorded this thing on the road. It's the, it's the first ever mobile main event. And I'm trying not to repeat myself, honestly, because a, a lot of the things I said during the recording, I'm trying not to repeat right now. But uh, it's been a rough few days for yours, truly. Um, and I'll, I'll delve into that uh, during the course of this podcast here. I don't know how long this thing's going to be. We're probably looking at between a half hour, 45 minutes, give or take. But uh, again, I just wanted to get a quick episode out there. And uh, listen, thanks guys for supporting me through this whole thing. Thanks um, for your kind words. I've gotten some nice emails, uh, some cool tweets from some of you, and it's it's been a really cool experience for me. And I'm, you know, I I still want to continue on the podcast, and I want to keep doing more and more, and hopefully I can devote more time to it uh, as the days go by. Well, we shall see. We're vastly fastly approaching episode number twenty. Hopefully we can uh, we can make that a little bit special, perhaps get uh, a special guest or two on the air here. Uh, listen, thanks for downloading. Thanks for tuning in. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to the content that I recorded on the road. And again, hopefully uh, this turns out well, and hopefully the sound quality is good too. We're going to be sure we mix this thing up right and present it to you in a way that uh, uh, is not um, obnoxious to your ears. Uh, any more than usual that you're used to hearing from me. <laughs> or used to reading from my work. So yeah, we'll try to clean it up, make this thing as, as pleasant as pleasant to the ears as possible. So uh, here we go, folks. Here's the audio. Stay tuned. Okay, folks. So as we said during the opening um, of this podcast, this is the very first time that the main event has gone on the road. Uh, I don't have a clear destination in mind. And actually, I don't have very long here. But uh, I had a few things on my mind, and I thought, what better way to, to bang out a quick episode of the main event than to just, you know, roll with it. So <laughs> that's what we're trying to do here today, folks. We're just going to roll with it. Depending upon what time you decide to listen to this particular episode, uh, this is... Monday, June 15th, 2015, the year of our Lord, and we are unfortunately four days removed from the death of one of the most legendary icons in the history of the professional wrestling business, and I'm talking, of course, about the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. I've written a lot about Dusty during the years. For anyone out there who, who cares to check it out, I just recently put a piece up on my own blog, uh, which of course is uh, tomclarkbr.wix.com slash blog. The name of the column is Thank You, Dusty. And it essentially says what a lot of other people are saying right now. It echoes a lot of everyone else's sentiments, but I, I sort of put my own personal spin on there. For me, Dusty Rhodes was the epitome of the classic babyface in the industry. He's it. And the next best example I can come up with is probably Ricky Steamboat. Maybe the, the top one and two babyfaces of all time. And there have been some great ones, all right? But Dusty just had the entire package. He had charisma by the truckload. He had intensity. He had ability. He could flat out go in the ring for a 302-pounder from Austin, Texas. He had, I mean, Dusty had, his cardio was amazing. I mean, he could hang with Ric Flair for an hour straight, not even be breathing hard, not even get blowed up. I mean, that's, that's impressive. And talk about ability. Dusty could work lights out, man. He's one of those guys that can make everyone he stepped into the ring with look much better than what they actually were, which is, of course, the true definition of what a great professional wrestler is supposed to be. Do you make other people better than what they were when they stepped into the ring with you or better than they possibly could have looked with anyone else? That really is the question. And for me, 
Dusty is in the top ten greatest wrestlers of all time, perhaps even top five, um, if you're inclined to do such a list. But Dusty had everything, not just ability, as we said. We had, he had charisma, he has intensity, and could work a stick like no one's business. I mean, you can count on one hand the best talkers in the history of the industry. Dusty Rhodes is top five. I mean, it, it really depends on your frame of reference and and how you how you quantify your decisions. But to me, best talker in the history of the game is Dusty Rhodes. He's number one. Ric Flair is number two. Paul Heyman's in the top five as well. CM Punk is in there. Jake the Snake Roberts is in there. I mean, just guys that, you know, when they cut a promo, you listened. You couldn't help but listen. You didn't have a choice but to listen. They drew you in. Whether it was by volume or by content or by both, you just could not help but be focused on your television. I mean, that's what it's all about. And for me, again, Dusty is the greatest of all time. I mean, he really is. Um, if you're hearing that beep, that was actually our local law enforcement. <laughs> uh, hopefully I don't get pulled over and ticketed for doing a podcast while I'm driving. Uh, this is what happens, folks, when you're on the road. But um, Dusty's death came as a blow uh, to yours truly. And a lot of it I went to great detail about and have gone to great detail about over the years and how my feelings, my personal feelings toward Dusty, the American dream. And and I'll go, I'll go ahead and delve in a little bit into that right now. Uh, Dusty was my second father figure. I mean, he was it. He was... You know, my, my my actual father was a big guy. I was always a big kid. And my first childhood memory of Dusty um, was the fact that he was a big guy. And I just remember looking at him thinking, wow, he doesn't look like Rick. You know what I mean? He doesn't look like Arn and Tully. He sure doesn't look like the Road Warriors. So that's what caught my attention, first and foremost, about Dusty was his size. And then I saw him in the ring. And I mean, even here's the thing about wrestling fans. Even as young kids, you pretty well know who has it and who doesn't. I mean, let's just be honest about that, folks. I mean, we all we all went through our moments of, you know, a lot of people went through the Hulkamania phase. And depending on how old you are, you went through, uh, you know, uh, being a fan of Sting and the in the neon and the big blonde spiked hair and uh uh, you know, you, you went through those phases because, and, and, and kids today are going through the John Cena thing, right? Where John is the man. He is uh, the number one baby face of that company, of course, and or at least that's how he's presented. And kids today, probably 20 years from now, are going to be looking back and saying, God, I pulled for John. And it's no disrespect to John. I'm just saying, you know, when you get older and you get a little bit smarter and you, and if you stay with the business in terms of, uh, you know how things work behind the scenes, and you have a better understanding of how the industry uh, is actually run from top to bottom. You tend to come up with your own way of thinking. You're not so much inclined to believe what a promoter will, t will tell you or pull for who you are supposed to pull for. So that's why you see adults running around cheering for heels, although in my opinion that's a bunch of silly nonsense. Uh, to me, I just like to get lost in the product and just have complete fun with it. Um, but that's where a lot of that comes from is that people grow up and say, oh, well, you know, I hate Hogan. And I'm always thinking, well, dude, did you pull for him when you were like 10? Because a lot of us did. I did. I, I wasn't very familiar with the, with the World Wrestling Federation at that time. But what I saw of Hogan, I liked because I was a kid and, and, and you know, he, uh, uh, he, he played to those sensibilities uh, of children. He, he, he played up to your weaknesses as a child. You know, kids are not strong. Kids are not... Uh, can't go out and fight their own battles, but Hulk gave you confidence. Hulk's like, I'll fight your battle for you. Just believe in me. And a lot of that worked, and I'm, I'm sure the generation after me came along and, and felt the same way about Sting. And it just it just multiplies and just sort of builds from that point on. But, you know, I was not a huge WWF fan as a child, but what I knew of Hogan I liked. I was born an NWA baby. I was. I still am. And, you know, again, Crockett Country, North Carolina, uh, you can't help but, but have been inundated with Jim Crockett Promotions, Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling, Georgia Championship Wrestling, Championship Wrestling from Florida. You know, I mean, we're right here in the heart of the Mid-Atlantic region. And 
You know, for me, my hero as a child was Dusty Rhodes, followed very closely by the Rock and Roll Express and Magnum TA, Chief Wahoo McDaniel, you know. But for me, Dusty was it. Dusty was the man. And years and years later, still happy to say, yes, I was a Dusty Rhodes fan as a child. Yes, I'm still a Dusty Rhodes fan today. And again, there's there's a huge outpouring of sentiment right now. A lot of people really making their feelings known. Um, if any of you saw the Money in the Bank uh, event on the WWE Network on June 14th, uh, then you saw uh, the video packages that were done in Dusty's honor. Very touching, very moving. I thought I was done crying about it, to be honest with you. But it was, uh, it was tough to watch. And Renee Young, uh, who I've been critical of in the past, um, was very emotional, very choked up. Uh, it, it's completely understood. Um, Dusty touched a lot of people in that company and outside of that company. Dusty, when, when you use the word icon, that, that word was thrown around quite a bit during the Monday Night Wars, uh, pretty carelessly, I might add. But if you want to really, really define the word icon in, in, in the business, then you're talking about Dusty Rhodes. And it's hard to, to come up with a lot of other guys that really fit the mold of what Dusty represented, not just to the business, but to the fans as well. Dusty, as I said, was everything. I mean, he had everything it took to become a legend, and that's exactly what he did. He was a legendary star in the business. He will never be forgotten. Dusty's just one of those guys, you know. And, again, best talker in the history of the game, in my opinion. The American dream, okay, the idea that you can come from absolutely nothing and become better. You can make something out of nothing. That whole idea is what keeps this country going. It's the truth. It's what keeps people moving upward instead of down. If you're of the mindset of, I don't want or need help, I'm going to do this myself on my own, and whether I succeed or fail, I'm going to be able to say I did it because of my own effort. Not because of anyone else's, but because of my effort. That's the American dream, man. Wanting better for yourself, for your children. Wanting better for your future, for your children's future. Uh, and not to get political on you, because I don't often get political, but my favorite quote of all time from JFK was in a speech he made. And it's one of the my favorite quotes of all time and, and definitely my favorite Kennedy quote of all time. And I'm going to hope I don't misquote this here. I'm pretty sure I've got it off the top of my head. The fact is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's futures. And we are all mortal. And that goes hand in hand with the American dream. You know, don't think about today. Think about tomorrow. How can I better myself? How can I come from something and become somebody? And that's what Dusty Rhodes did, the son of a plumber from Austin, Texas. Coming from nothing, father worked, worked his fingers to the bone, the whole backstory of his family. Dusty Rhodes, the American dream, coming from, from dust, literally dust, just <laughs> dusty, right? Coming from the ground up, man. Getting, building himself to the point where he's a superstar, he's an icon. On the Mount Rushmore professional wrestling Dusty Rhodes had better be on that mountain. Seriously. If Dusty and Rick are not on the, the Mount Rushmore professional wrestling, then you grew up watching the World Wrestling Federation. You don't know what you're talking about. Straight up. Okay? But to me, Dusty's definitely up there. And the fact that he accomplished what he accomplished, looking the way he did, opened the doors for guys all over the world inside the business. It did. I mean, one of, the, one of the great things about Stone Cold, uh, one of the reasons he's always, he's always said, one of the reasons that was given to him by Bischoff, why Eric Bischoff fired him to begin with, was that, look, Steve, you've got your black chunks and your black boots. There's not a lot we can do to market that. Austin's like, all right, cool. So he's gone. Well, Vince McMahon found a way to market it, right? And it's that idea that you don't have to look like a star. What you need is charisma. You need heart. You need all the things, the intangibles that go along with being not just a star and not a superstar, a megastar. A star that guys look up to from the moment they get into the business and before. But when they get into the business, they, they, they long to become that relevant. They want to be that important. They want to leave a lasting impression. When you talk about leaving a lasting impression, that's Dusty Rhodes, man. The American dream, again, this idea 
that you can come from nothing and become someone. That is such an important lesson to teach your kids. And that's such an important life lesson to remember yourself. Is that you know what? At the end of the day, if I want something, I'm going to have to work for it. I mean, it's 2015. A lot of our ideology as a country is changing. You know, we've become a welfare state many, in many cases. You know, cradle to grave mentality. But the American dream is alive and well, folks. It will never die. And Dusty, again, was the epitome of that American dream. He was it. Dusty, by the sheer force of his presence, and I've said this about guys in the past, but I don't think I've ever said about anyone that, that, that held more true than it does for Dusty. If At the time, during his heyday, if you didn't know who Dusty Rhodes was and he walked into a room, you would know he's somebody. You would just know. Because he had an aura around him. He had a presence. He was a sheer force of will. You know? That was Dusty. 100%. And when you looked at the guy, you just knew he was a star. The Hard Times promo. I don't look like the athlete of the day is supposed to look. My, my belly's a little big. My honey's just a little big. But brother, I am bad, and they know I'm bad. Dusty Rhodes, man. That's him. As I said before, I, I identified directly with Dusty because he was a big guy like my father, and he was a, I was a big kid, uh, so I directly identified with him, and I looked at him and I said, hey, you know what? If he can do this, I can do it. I loved wrestling as a child. I mean, if you grew up a wrestling fan, then you threw a mattress in the floor at some point and had some matches on it, unless you owned a trampoline. I didn't have a trampoline. I, I threw a mattress in the floor and had matches with my cousin and a couple of my best friends when I was a kid. And, and yes, I made title belts out of cardboard. Again, if you grew up a wrestling fan, you do all you did, you did all that stuff. I rang the bell, ding ding, right? Had my own entrance music, cassette player sitting there with music <laughs> turned wide open. I created my own promotion with my own characters. I mean, I was writing storylines long before I actually wrote storylines in the business. I mean, I did it as a as a ten year old, twelve year old. That was me, you know, and before. But Dusty was the guy. Again, I directly identify with Dusty. He was there for me. You know, that's to me, that's what the definition of a role model and a hero is. No matter what happens, he's there for you. You see what I'm saying? He may not know he is, but he is. He's there for you. He doesn't change. And if he does change, it's for the better. Everyone screws up. Michael Jordan, for as many positives as, as he did for the game of basketball... As much as he means to people all over the world, there was always the talk of, uh, you know, think personal things in his marriage that, that happened, and then there was the gambling thing that, that went down. And, you know, you can always find dirt on someone, right? But to me, you could have said anything about Dusty, unless it was just a truly heinous thing, and you wouldn't have been able to change my mind about him because, again, Dusty was my hero. He was everything that I wanted to be. And I wanted to be a pro wrestler as a child. But the, the longer I watched, the longer I followed Dusty, the more I listened, I, I decided whether it was, you know, it, maybe it was subconsciously I did. But it, it really started to get through to me, hey, the, the things he's telling me I can put to other parts of my life. And, you know, what, what nine-year-old's going to say those things out loud? Certainly not me. But looking back on it years later, I did. I made a very conscious decision at a very early age to never drink and to never do drugs and never touch cigarettes. And I'm proud to say, lo these many year, many years later, that I still have never tasted alcohol and still have never smoked a cigarette, still never touched drugs. And I've always tried to do the right thing, didn't steal, tried not to cheat anyone. And a lot of that came from the things I learned as a child. Not just from my mom, who did a bang-up job raising me, by the way. She really did, because we didn't have much. But also from Dusty Rhodes. And I know it's deep, and I know it's... You know, you hear people say, don't make me a role model. Was it Charles, Bar Charles Barkley back in the day? I'm not a role model, right? Well, you know, I get that sentiment. I do. I understand where that comes from. But you have to be smart about who you pin your admiration on, okay? And as long as you don't obsess over it, and it's, it's a healthy admiration, 
you can take the things that person does in their own life and the examples that they set and the lives that they the lives that they lead and you can directly apply it to your own life to your own everyday existence which is what I did with the American dream and it helped me as a kid and it helped me a lot Dusty was the second father figure in my life because at age four six days before my fifth birthday actually my father died due to injuries from a head-on collision thanks to a drunk driver hence my decision to never touch alcohol or drugs of any kind and I've, I've stuck to that and Dusty in essence became his replacement the thing about Dusty is he'll never know he never knew and of all the people that I've I've been around through the years and I, I was around some mid-Atlantic guys and some legends from the NWA several several years ago I never got the chance to meet Dusty and that's I'm always going to regret that, especially especially now. So he'll never know what he meant to me in my life, okay? And I'm sure I'm not the only one that he had, that he had that place in their hearts and in their lives. He's very special to a lot of people out there. But I know. I know what he meant to me. I know the difference he made in my life from a very, very young age up to this point. And it's lessons learned. It's life lessons learned that you just don't forget. And even if he didn't mean that much to you in your own life, okay, I defy you to go back and watch his matches and not have fun. The essence of professional wrestling, I don't care if you're 7 or 70, have fun, man. If you're not having fun, then you're not watching it right or you're watching the wrong show. You've got to, you've got to have fun, man. That's what it's all about. I mean, I, I write about the business eight days a week, it feels like, man. And, and you know, I, I, I live, breathe, eat, sleep the business all the time. It's always a topic of conversation. There's always pro wrestling TV happening. WWE Network is always on. Old NWA stuff on YouTube is always happening. And that's my life. That's what I've done for years and years and years. I, I dragged the, the box of wrestling magazines out that I hadn't looked at in a month or so and Flipped some out, looked at them, and took pics, and had my six-year-old reading, reading a couple of them. He's still learning to read, doing really well, by the way. And uh, that's my life, you know? That's who I am. That's what people know about me. They know my name, and then they know what I do. And that's what I do. That's who I am. And I have fun with the business. No matter how immersed in it I am, and it's up to my neck, trust me, up to my chin in writing about it and having to break down matches and analyze them and predict what's going to happen next month and next year and next WrestleMania. And it can all become a very tedious process at times, but I wouldn't trade it because I, I still make it fun. No matter how analytical I have to be, no matter how detailed I have to be when I write, no matter how much it's edited or I have to edit it myself, it does make a bit of difference, man. Because what matters more than anything else is that I still have fun. I still have fun watching the product. I still have fun following it. I still have fun the whole time. Okay? I still manage to pull something out of it. Even the worst Monday Night Raw you've ever seen, I've pulled something out of it that's entertained me or that's made me smile or that made me go, hey, that guy looked great in the ring tonight. He really worked his tail off to get the point across and to make a good match. We don't have enough of that. We don't have enough guys in my field, in my opinion, that are willing to pull out the positives from the pro wrestling presentation that they're watching at the time. Whether it's NWA, TNA, Ring of Honor, Lucha Underground, it doesn't make a difference. You know, even if it's just an independent group that, they, that these guys go watch on the weekends, it's the same kind of idea. Take something positive away from it. Just enjoy the sport. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. If you don't, you can find another sport to follow. Seriously. You're probably not very happy. Go watch the NBA, NFL, hockey, Major League Baseball. Do whatever you want, but leave the business alone, man. I mean, if you hate it that much, if you criticize every single time, and I get accused, and you know who you are out there, <laughs> I get accused quite a bit. Uh, accused is a harsh word. Uh, I, I, I've been told, how about that? I've been told more often than not that I'm so analytical. I just take the fun out of it. You just take the fun out of it, Tom. Well, perhaps, uh, but I don't, I don't, I never mean to. 
And again, it's the writer's mind at work. It's the analyst's mind that I just cannot seem to turn off to save my life. Yes, I analyze. Yes, I overanalyze. Yes, I watch the programs and, and watch the product. And, and you know, um, I try to soak in, absorb, and analyze it and, and, and dissect it as much as I can because that's who I am. That's what I do. But, but make no mistake about it, folks. I still have fun. And one of the reasons I had fun from day one was Dusty Roads. And still. Later today, I'm probably going to go home and I'm going to watch some more Dusty Roads. Not because he's passed away, God rest his soul, but because, you know, it's what I do. It's who I am. There's nothing like a great Dusty Roads match. You want to go have some fun? Watch Dusty Roads versus Ric Flair. Great American Bash in a steel cage when Dusty won the title. Go watch Dusty Roads versus Tully Blanchard for the Hand of Baby Doll. Go watch that. You really want to watch some great professional wrestling? Go watch anything from Jim Crockett Promotions back in the day. And chances are you might get one out of ten matches you don't care for, but the other nine are great, top-notch, and five-star. I'm being straight with you, man. Go If you don't believe me, just go check and see for yourself. It's great stuff. Dusty Rhodes is a huge part of that company. He's a booker, of course, for Jim Crockett. Responsible for some of the most important storylines. The concept of pay-per-view came from Dusty Rhodes. I mean, he was the guy. Did Closed Circuit TV for Starcade Thanksgiving night. And and was selling out locations. Fans were paying to come to arena just to watch it on the screen. I mean, that's a big deal. One of the most inventive minds, creative minds in the history of the business. And again, he was the total, complete package inside the ring. If you will. Dusty Rhodes. We're going to miss you, brother. Uh, thanks for all the memories. Um, cherish life, folks. It, it could end before you know it. And uh, it, it's an important thing to remember. Dusty Rhodes is going to be sorely missed. He's missed right now. This is going to take a long time to get over. The day I, I found out the news, I was... Uh, I was emotional, and I've been that way ever since. And it's probably going to keep that keep up like that for a while. And it's to be understood. Again, he didn't impact just my life. He impacted a lot of lives out there. And Dusty Rhodes, again, one of the best of all time. And um, a legend. A legend in this business. A legend in his time. Yeah. The American dream. What more can you say? Thanks to us for everything. So there you go, folks. That's it. That was the episode 19. That's the audio I recorded. Uh, and again, folks, this was all about Dusty. This was just uh, an effort by yours truly to get something um, fairly quick out there just so I could sort of put my two cents worth in. I just couldn't let any more time pass until I did. Um, I, again, I, I ask that you, if you have the opportunity, please go check out my work. Um, the column I wrote in particular on Dusty is uh, really from the heart. If you look on my Twitter account at Tom Clark BR, you'll see some links that I post on the day of his passing from an old column I put on Bleach Report back in 2011, uh, which pretty much says everything uh, combined with the, the column I wrote on my own blog, pretty much everything I could ever want to say about Dusty uh, in a nutshell. So as we said before in the intro, folks, if, you've, if you're not very familiar with Dusty or if you haven't seen his work in a, in a long time, I encourage you to go look it up. I encourage you to go watch some matches. Just go have fun with it, man. That's all that counts here, and, and a lot of stuff that we were not able to cover today, and, and maybe later on we'll do a, a much longer podcast, go full in length on not just Dusty, but a lot of the older guys from NWA, uh, some of them that yours truly had the pleasure to work with around 2000-2001, uh, very cool time for me. I, I have been teasing an old school edition of the main event here since pretty much day one. I have yet to do that. Uh, but that podcast episode will be on the way very soon, so sit tight and wait for that. Um, I'm going to say thank you again to all of you out there who are supporting me, and for those of you folks tuning in, thanks again for following me online and for reading my work. Any read is greatly appreciated. I've had a lot of support out there from the time I began back in 2010 to this day, and again, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, Tom Clark BR is where you can find me again on Twitter. You can draw me a line at, on Yahoo. Uh, if you are so inclined, tomcartbr at yahoo.com. Please check me out. Um, and also, I'm now on, I've been on Facebook, but don't bother. I'm kind of boring. I don't really say much there except just plug my columns and stuff. And sometimes I'll make fun of people, which is something I kind of do from time to time. But uh, I'm on Pinterest now. Pin, pin interest, Pinterest. 
I don't freaking know, dude. I'm just whatever. I just found another platform to put my ugly mug on there. And I'm there. God knows what I'm doing on there, but who knows. Tumblr, I'm on there too. And no, there's no creepy fan fiction on my little Tumblr page thing. I don't know what they're called. Can we just be honest here? Besides Twitter and Facebook, is there any other app that's really dominating the world right now? I mean, honestly, Snapchat maybe. I don't snap, by the way. But uh, I snap with my fingers. Worst joke ever. <laughs> but, uh, oh, it was terrible. That was a genuine laugh, too. That's sad. Okay, folks, I think that's going to do it for me. Please be sure to look me up on Bleacher Report, as well as the highly esteemed Camel Clutch blog, and again, my own personal blog, for which I have not yet bought the domain name, because yes, I am cheap, and I am very lazy. TomCartBR.Wix.com slash blog. Thanks, folks, for everything. Thanks for tuning in. Come back real soon. We'll be back, before you know it, with episode 20 of Tom Clark's Main Event. <laughs>